I'm actually sitting in the circle that you've seen a few times now. It's not the most pretty circle. The landscape is magnificent, but there are more glamorous landscapes. But it's the right place, the right circle for me to be to, to talk specifically about the circle. Because I talk about the circle, I, I bring it up constantly in everything I talk about. And it's possible you don't know exactly what I mean, still. And I do call the medicine of one at times the path of the circle. So, what is it with that circle? What's that all about? What do you mean, the circle? What do you mean, be the circle? So let's start with where I'm at right now. You can see behind me uh, the edge of the circle. It goes all the way around. There's openings. This particular circle, I had, it took a lot of work. These rocks had came out of the ground. They're huge. This one was sitting in the ground. It's been here for thousands of years. There are these white round rocks, about 12 of them. So every, every place, the place itself, I find it, and then the place tells me what to do there. But the circle is, yes, I have many circles out on the land that I use for different purposes. But this whole sense of the path of the circle. And I'm constantly going like this when I say, be the circle, you as the circle, okay? Because, first of all, yes, it's a symbol of wholeness, integration, oneness, balance. But also on an energetic level, when you are... It's like more like a sphere. It's almost like the, the light of the sun radiating from out in all directions, all around you. So you can see the movement of my arms. Okay? It's open, the circle. It's spacious, the circle. It breathes, the circle. You as the circle, open, breathing, spacious, relaxed, and the quiet. That's why when I come here, right now you can't hear anything. So the actual physical place is a tool and an aid because in places like this, there's a beauty that helps you relax, that helps you open, that invites you to be so big as this spacious southwest sky. There's a warm sun that's relaxing. There's the physical circle, just to remind you of that sense that it becomes circles on into infinity. Because it, that's what it is. So this physical place does have an energy to it, too. That you, you can feel it. Everybody I bring here, they feel it. They feel it. It's easy to be peaceful. It's easy to be quiet. It's easy to open up. To feel. 
So the circle is obviously a physical place. The circle is you in an open, the center is a heart, okay? You as the heart, okay? The heart. Not the mind, but the mind can be in the heart. So it's a physical place, it's an energetic state, it's a symbol of wholeness. And when you are the circle, just, I come here and I just sit. That's what I do, I come and I sit. That's what I came out here today. I've already been, I've sat here for an hour and a half, just. Basically, when my mind starts to think, maybe, you know, my mind wants to think about what I'm going to do or say because it's afraid, right? It's afraid, of, uh, uh, it's got to be right. I got to say it right. I got to do it right. You know, we got to do it right. Otherwise, people are going to not, they're going to judge us. We didn't do it right. That's fear. So all the thinking is trying to push the fear out of the circle. That's what most of our thinking is about. It's a movement in the circle that's wrestling with these other movements mentally to control them. The essence of you is this big-hearted, open circle, which doesn't have to be in a physical place like this. It's you. It's who you are as a big-hearted, open, here presence. So, let's just imagine that, and this is the circle that I, I bring people to, to do a vision quest. So, vision quest, if you're watching this, in a way, you're already on a vision quest. I don't consider a vision quest about trying to have a, a vision of who you are. It's actually removing what's in the way of the vision of who you are. Because it's right there. This. That's why I come here, to sit in it. That's what I, I try to help people do, clear the way so they can sit in it. But let's imagine I brought this person here. They're going to spend a night, two nights, maybe three nights. And in our, I've told them about the heart, the spaciousness, that when they're in this circle, that's what they're, that's what they're doing. And if they start to think a lot and can't stop, go for a walk or something and come back. But as they're staying here, as, as they're staying here, it's like, okay, all around me out here are things that I've tried to push out of the circle throughout my life or lives, however you or the soul's journeys. Maybe I don't know exactly what they are. But maybe this particular person does have a very strong dynamic of what we've talked about before. The warrior and the victim. This is a warrior rock. Why is this? A, it's a heart. Okay, but it's, man, that has an edge and that could hurt you. It's also strong, big. This is a victim heart. It's fleshy. It's got pink. It's been gouged out. It hurts. It hurts. This one can't be hurt. Okay. So, whether I'm polarized into this one or this one, they're both components that need to be in my circle. If this is the dominant force, I need to own it and recognize it. So I bring it into the circle but I am the circle. I bring in its toughness, its defensiveness, its mental, its need to control, which underneath it, fear. So if I bring the warrior in, in order to free myself of the warrior, I have to bring its fear in.
Maybe they're almost like separate personalities in me. Maybe I actually flip from one to the other. So I must honor both of what's inside of them. That's what, when you bring these into the circle, it's to acknowledge how they're protecting and defending and controlling, but it's to penetrate into what is holding them in place and polarizing you into it through their feelings. So let's say, okay, I know I got these two. All right, I, I brought them into the circle. This physical space, which is actually myself. My, my loving, big-hearted self I'm bringing them into. And let's say that it could be two different people, actually. One's polarized in this and this. But they both, it happened for the same reason, the same event. So if I were to bring in the event that involves most of the time people, and I looked out here and I looked... And I found this, shattered. So this experience of shattered, 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 okay? Maybe I'm, I'm, I'm four years old, maybe I'm seven, maybe I'm 12, maybe I'm 20, or maybe it happens at all those times. I keep getting shattered. And this glass is trying to hold itself together. So it tries to hold itself together in this way or it tries to hold itself together in this way. But underneath them, both, is shattered. All the feelings of shattered. The powerlessness, the helplessness, the, the broken feeling, I'm broken. And maybe there's a belief, okay, on, in this, I'm a broken person and they believe it. So you're bringing that into your big-hearted awareness, the circle, yourself, this physical place as this, but also, ah, I keep saying that over and over again, that I'm broken, I'm broken, I'm broken, I'm broken. And then I believe it. So they become aware of that, to free themselves from that belief as they bring it in. To this circle in this path of the circle to free this from owning each one of these which are protection you don't get into this okay and maybe deep down underneath this is this teeny little heart of their fragile essence and even this so this experience of shattered, okay, and it protects itself so that this they never get to touch inside of themselves. Innocence, wonder, the child's curiosity, magic, and I want to be loved. So it's like these layers, this layer, the victim, this one, this, and this is it. So, ah, ah. So I'm bringing all these into the circle so that I can engage this as this big-hearted, open, loving, relaxed, and maybe it cr runs through me. Maybe these have a host of feelings. Maybe I wasn't able, when I was shattered, I couldn't protect myself. So an energy of this couldn't come in. Okay? So for the victim, that's the warrior. And the, the warrior's disconnected from the <gasps> shattered. Nobody's going to do that to me again. Never. So we bring these in in order to free them. There were a couple of rocks. I just I didn't go out to pick them up. I, there were rocks that had something written on them. In fact, they both, interestingly enough, and I picked them up at different times, have something written on both sides that are opposites. Doubt 
and reject. Both of these, because of their pain, are rejecting, pushing out of the circle of themselves. But as here I am on this vision quest, I must go out there and retrieve them as this physical act of finding an object and bringing it in to my awareness, to this space of feeling. What I have rejected and the pain of all my doubt, my doubt of self, because then I can't trust. And this is embrace. So you're actually owning your rejection and your doubt in order to liberate from this old story. Your trust and ability to embrace. So even as you're sitting here as the circle, in a circle that is a symbol of God that is love but in its on conceptual state just as open spacious so that this deeply wounded and cut and bleeding victim and this hard edgy warrior now can come in and so then what evolves as this person is here on their quest is these rocks that are out of balance, that are aspects in themselves, by them connecting with the feelings and the beliefs that have gotten set in place. Now the warrior gets to be balanced. And what was the victim is feeling, intuition, a deeper knowing. And the two of these now is forces that balance in this symbol of the circle, but energetically within that person's presence with them as a center. From this balance is trust. So that, that their mind doesn't spin so much. And this was the ultimate key, this little teeny heart, way down deep inside. It got so lost and rejected that that rejection then of all these things does not allow that person to touch who they really are. quiet, spacious, open circle in this path of the circle. And when they start to touch it, when these things have been moved, it's easier to be quiet. It's easier not to be driven by your thinking, just to let it move. That's what the mind does. It thinks. That it, that's what it does. It moves. It's supposed to. We're sort of turning it into this place. So, you don't have to have a circle like this to follow the path of the circle. It's an aid. It's a tool. It's a sacred place. It's a power spot. You could have a circular rug in your home in a special room and let that be your place and decorate it. You could have a few rocks gathered around the outside of you and spend time in there each day. And even if you can't stop thinking, you, you, you just bring all that thinking right into that circle. And all the impossibility of stopping. But if you can, just to help you, to reinforce this, 
to give yourself a, a sacred place, no matter where you live, somewhere, in your backyard, in a park, a drive out of town, but you have to do it. Whether it's going into the bathroom, or maybe it's the only place you can be that's quiet, and the circle is you. You must give it time. You must cultivate this knowing of what is that? What's the circle? What's that mean? And as you practice this rather than rejection, embracing, letting move, you become to know what that is. That's how you come to know it, not beforehand. You come to know it by walking the path of the circle. Not by trying to look way at the end and figure it out. That's why it is the path of the circle. Don't make any excuses. No matter how difficult your trauma, how difficult your life, this will help you. But it comes from your own earnestness and commitment, and it is a path that's for life. You can call it whatever you want. You could fit every religion in here, really. The circle is hardly sectarian. So in the end, you bring the shattered in, and in allowing it to truly not hold itself together, it's as if you let it fall apart. It's a surrender. So that's the ultimate final movement of you as the circle. You give up the control that would hold it together with all your thinking. So that wholeness comes back. The wholeness comes back. The wholeness comes back. I have a bee that just flew up my pant leg. And at that moment, I oftentimes have people, a bee will come into the circle. It's perfect. It's there. And they, you know, tense and everything and panic and, um, There he is. And he went all the way up my pant leg, too. So I felt it inside of me. But if I allowed my fear to own me and I tensed rather than relaxed, this that would have aroused my fear would have caused me suffering. But if I can be the circle to the bee, it's okay. So one of the most important things that you are engaging is your fear. So right now, as you sit quietly, Anything that you could possibly be afraid of, the object of it, the person, a bank, a religion that wants to persecute you, anything, you bring that in and you just bring in all your feelings in relationship to it. 
in my pants again. Interesting. And relax to whatever your reactions to that are. Whether they're anger, fear, panic, sobbing, it doesn't matter. I sometimes have people stand on the edge of a cliff if they're afraid of heights, just to the point where they feel themselves start to tense. Just breathe and relax. Be the circle to it. Be the quiet. Be the stillness. In this path of the circle. And I'll just sit here and be with my friend the bee. There he is.